Hi everyone, Rick Bray with BT BOCES, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to make what's called a combination graph using Google Sheets. Now, a combination graph is, as you can see here, it's just a graph or a chart where your data is visually represented in different ways. So in this case, I have some columns and a line going across, and this was kind of the, the genesis of this video, was a colleague said, you know, I have this graph with data, and I wanna put a line across it to kind of show like a threshold value. And I know I can take a screenshot and just draw a line over it, but there's gotta be a better way to do it. So we can do that with combo graphs and I'll show you a couple tr uh, tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Now, full disclosure, uh, the data that you want visually represented differently has to be a different series or a different column in your data. So here I have like this value here, and then I have my average value that I wanted as a line as a separate column, so it could be a separate series. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't know of a way to just make one value work for everything. It kind of each value point needs a comparison. So yes, you could go and manually enter 51 for all of them. That really stinks, I wouldn't do that. You know, if there's only three or four, not a big deal, but if there's like 500, uh, you can use autofill, right? And to use autofill, select the cell that you wanna clone, and you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner is like a blue box, right? If you put your mouse on that box, you'll see it changes from being a pointer arrow to a, like a uh, cross, right? and a T, and I can click on that box and drag down, see the dotted lines? I'm saying I wanna clone that value everywhere. That's great, but here's tip number one, that is not dynamic, meaning if I wanna change this value to 45, it doesn't do that. So what I might suggest instead is that you have your value here, the next one down, hit uh, select in the box, type equals, and then click the box above. Why? Because that's gonna say I want this box to equal this one. And now if I autofill, right, when I change that top value, it's gonna be reflected in all the other ones. So there you go, tip number one, just helping you out there. All right, I have to jump back in here in post-production because there's something I forgot to mention. Um, another way that you can autofill, right? We talked about uh, grabbing this little box. Sometimes that's difficult for people. Um, another option, especially if you're dealing maybe with littles that don't have the dexterity, is if you highlight the cells that you wanna autofill, and on a, a Windows machine, maybe a Chromebook, you can sit, uh, press Control and Return on your keyboard. On a Mac, it's gonna be Command and Return, or you know the Enter key, and that's gonna autofill down. So another little tip for you there, uh, Control and Enter, or Command and Enter for a Mac, will help you autofill if you had like a lot and you didn't feel like dragging. Great, back to the show. Um, so how do I make this box happen? Well, just like doing any sort of a graph in Google Sheets, I'm gonna just highlight my data, and you can either say uh, insert a chart, or you can click this little icon here, and boom, there's my chart. You'll notice it's separating it into um, separate series already, because I have the value here and the average. So that's cool, that works. Um, how do I get the combination? Well, on the right-hand side here, you'll notice the chart type, I wanna select here a combo chart. And boom, there it is, there's my line, awesome. All right, great, so now I have this, but uh, you know it doesn't extend all the way, uh, so how can I change this? There's a couple different options. Under Customize on the right-hand side, if you select Series, the first thing you'll see is, uh, this is set to apply to all series, I wanna select that average value. Right now it's set to be a line, right? I can also choose uh, area where it's kind of shading underneath that. I can select columns, which is more or less where it started. Um, I can select a line or I can select a stepped area. Now here's the thing I like about stepped area is it extends across the entire graph, whereas the line just extends from the center of your first point to the center of your last point. So stepped area. But you know, maybe you don't want all this uh, coloring underneath, right? Well, first off, you can adjust the color, right? I can make it any color I want. And you'll notice down here, the area opacity. If I set that to zero, now I have a line that goes all the way across my graph 
with nothing showing underneath. Sometimes the stepped area is a nice thing to show the data below, sometimes it's not. Uh, you can set your line type over here, the thickness of your line, so you are good to go. Now, in some cases, this combination, you may actually want to show a trend with that data, and because if your data points are in like totally different scales, you may not see the change in one that you will in the other, because right now, both data points are being plotted against a single axis. You can select the series that you want and tell it to put the axis on the right side. And in this case, you see uh, it's going to scale the one series according to the right scale, uh, the right axis, excuse me, and scale the other series according to the left. So you might be able to see that trend a little bit better. Totally up to you with what's going to fit. Um, so there you have it. That is how you can make a combination or combo graph in Google Sheets. And of course, if you wanted to, you could tell it to move to its own chart, move to its own sheet, and you still have the ability to edit it from here. Awesome. Uh, if you have any questions on this or anything else EdTech related, by all means, please feel free to drop me an email at rbray at btboses.org. You're welcome to subscribe to this channel to get notifications and updates when new videos are posted. And as always, thank you for watching.